then um, this is the book that's a little more in tune with what we're doing today. We're doing another uh, foot demo. And this book covers all the feet. And there's over a hundred Bernina feet. For those of you who own another brand, this foot that I'm working with today shows up across the across brands. We're also going to load um, a page for you to download if you want to print it. We're working on the really super not sexy <laughs> number two foot today. So the the big book of feet picks a feet, or picks all the different feet, gives you some variations on using it, tips and techniques on using it, and then sometimes some just fun things to make with that foot. Yeah, we go, just those, this page and this page. So that's gorgeous. And if you're, if you're a foot fiend like I am, this is good value to help you keep using those feet. We want you to use those feet. Um, in our new owners class, we always tell people, we've brought the feet out, we brought the exercises out because we want you to try it before you buy it. Uh, we recognize that they are not inexpensive. They're totally worth the money, but only if it's of value to you. Um, I don't own all of them. I own a good portion of them. <laughs> and the one, some of them I use once or twice a year and I'm grateful that I have them. And then some of them I don't use um, that frequently, but some of them I use, I would say two or three times a month, totally worth the investment. And I love just having them for fun and they don't go bad in your drawer. So um, I've had many of them now for 20 years. Happy I spent the money on them. I'm happy now when Bernina comes up with a new one and I can play with it. So um, this is uh, in Bernina land, a, two, a number two foot or a number two A. 2A is for the nine millimeter machines, the bigger, wider zigzag. And um, for other brands, it's called the over edge foot. And you'll see, you'll see in a minute. Uh, these are the page notes. This one here is from one of our much older Bernina books. And there was an exercise in there and we actually sewed a neckline onto a, a piece of a fleece, like sweatshirt fleece. And in the class, a lot of people would say, well, Anne, I'm never going to make clothes, so I'm just going to skip this exercise. My response to that is we all own clothes and you'll save yourself a ton of money if you know how to fix them if you know there's a way to fix them because they're often made on machines that we don't have access to at home. Uh, sometimes it's just a serger and this foot, um, how it sews, how it overcasts the edges is similar to a serger foot. So in your best interest to know how to use the feet you have, twos and two A's came with some machines and then there are some machines, it was an optional foot. So you'll have to look in your box of accessories to see which one you have. Then uh, down the road, they changed the exercise to just doing an edge finish. So we're gonna get both of those loaded up for you to download to go with this video. So this one, they just did an edge finish. And I'm gonna go through a couple different exercises uh, over and above and beyond what the workbook said. Because once you have a foot, you might buy it for a certain exercise, but there's almost always other things it can do to help you with. And I'm going to walk you through a couple of those. Let me just do a close up of the foot for you guys. So the number two foot, often in the classes, I remind people to look at the bottom because often the bottom shows the business end of what the foot is and does. So this little tiny little twig here, that little metal bit, that's the most important part of this foot. And um, I, have, I have kind of a funny little um, thing to show you to help you understand what it does. But you can see it 
it's right in the way of stitching. So when you use this foot, you have to be sure the needle clears that little chunk of metal. So when you do something that's a zigzag, the stitch starts here, comes over here, and then it's under pressure and it likes to squish, right? So when you have a soft edge of fabric or like my fleshy arm here, it squishes. And so a lot of you have recognized that uh, in other zigzag, it's called tunneling. Now, if you think about the little metal bar in there as a bone, when I grab here where the bone is, if I zigzag over this, it can't squeeze because it's on st stitching over something hard. So uh, with a regular zigzag foot, you kind of have this up here, you have a big open space and the zigzags tend to squish and pull, but down over the, that metal bit, like here, the stitch can't because there's something firm there. Um, when the stitch is formed, it flows out the back of here. It's really hard to see, but um, maybe, how about down here? Right in here, there's a little bit of air. You can kind of see. And that's where the thread passes from the front to the back. So it will, it'll clear off that pin all the way to the back. That's the important thing. So that part there, think of that as the bone in, in the middle of the stitch or my wrist. And if you didn't have that, it would squish. Alrighty, so I had uh, uh, practiced on a few stitches earlier. So what you'll be looking for is a stitch that maybe has a straight edge here and then a bit of a zig. There's a few different ones on your machine. If you have uh, a machine that will let you tell it what foot's on there, by all means tell it what foot's on there. So you can see I've told my machine there. And you see that gray line in the screen? That gray line is saying you can't stitch here. And you can see I've just got a regular zigzag chosen. That regular zigzag um, is on every machine. Then on some of our machines, we have these stitches, which is one of the ones that I used. Um, those of you with a fancier Bernina, there's the question mark on your machine. If you hit the question mark and then touch the number of the foot, it tells you what that is. The important part when you're stitching, remember that wire? We want to make sure the zig clears that. And the edge of the foot, right here. That's where the edge of your fabric should be. And the zigzag will form over that little pin and it won't pinch. So I'm just going to finish up the plain old zigzag I was on, on the piece that's on the machine, just for you to see. I'm doing white on black. Now there will be some niceties uh, on a fabric that's as stretchy as this. It tends to stretch. You see that wave? So we'll have to do a few other things. We'll have to lift our um, pressure. We'll have to lighten up the pressure foot. That's also just a setting in the machine. But see, it's just a normal zigzag on the end there. Um, I've got a couple pieces of t-shirt knit. You can see quite stretchy. Most of us own a t-shirt or something made out of a lightweight knit, pajamas perhaps. The edge of the foot right here should hit the edge of the fabric right there. So I think in the camera you can see that that zigzag, just a regular zigzag, is going over that pin. And even though this is a soft knit, it won't have curled it. And I could move over just a little bit so I didn't get those little dimples there. The other thing, when you're working with a stretchy knit, you want a stitch that will stretch with it. Typically, if you have a t-shirt or something that falls to bits, I 
that's where you'll pick one of those stitches that does a little bit of seaming and overcasting and it'll blend in and hide with the serging that your shirt was probably made with. So straight, then a zig. See, it's doing a few straight stitches and then a little zig. So it's sewing it together and sealing that edge. And if it's stretching, as I said, you're going to have to go into your machine settings or some of you have a hard button on the side to lighten that up. Yeah, I could have given that just a little more room so we didn't get those little dimples. But so you see that stretches and goes back, but it sews and finishes. I'm going to grab just a piece of lightweight quilt cotton. And I'm going to go back to that simple zigzag. And I did have to move the needle so that we didn't have a crash with the edge. I told Tyler I could totally sew with a camera up my nose. I might have lied. <laughs> But normally you know that if you didn't have a, this foot on and you just had a regular zigzag foot on, when you zigzagged a raw edge like this, it would have just curled and we didn't get a curl. You can see it's still quite flat there because that bone, for lack of a better word, that metal bar was in there and it didn't allow the stitch to manhandle the fabric and pinch it up. Because the stitch was formed over that lovely metal bar. That's what keeps it from pinching. Uh, if you find that maybe it's still a little tight, maybe a bit pinchy, because I can feel there's a little tiny pinch happening there. Uh, loosen your tension. It would be just to loosen up your tension. And a lot of people get tense about tension. Don't, don't worry, you can always go back to where you were. Light, uh, lighten the tension, tighten the tension, whichever one you think might help you, test it. Remember, your new key phrase is, there's people who test and there are people who wish they had. So just so you can see, um, there's a few other stitches in the machine that might work. And as long as they clear the foot, they're gonna make be pretty happy. So this one does a straight and then you can see it's not really a zigzag. It does a straight stitch out and a straight stitch back on just a wee bit of an angle. Kind of like a blanket stitch but it's it's a, actually an edge finishing stitch and that's what this foot's for. There we go. Let's cut that, take a look at that one. And if you have a Bernina that has the question mark on it, hit the question mark, touch the thing you're wondering about. It will give you some information. So probably for this one, not necessarily the greatest stitch, but it's nice to see it. You got to do some testing. Um, if you were, if you had a sweatshirt that had a cuff, a knit cuff, like this, this is um, ribbing. You can see it's kind of got those ridges in it. Really see them in the light and very stretchy. That's often on the cuff of a jacket or a sweatshirt. That might come off. You can put it back on with this. Remember what it does have for you is once it's sewed together, it stretches and relaxes. That's the things that you want when you're making these stitches. I'm going to try a different one. I'll show it to you. Check your accessories box. See if you are the lucky owner of one of these feet. And if not, you can add it to your foot supply. So this was, this stitch is more square. It's often used for other things than this, but it has that ability to stretch. It 
So it's kind of like a, a, a two use, but see, look at that. I've really stretched that to its limit and it goes back and you didn't hear a single stitch break. So that's what a number two is for. Not a very sexy foot, not as much fun perhaps as some of the others we've showed you and we'll show you in future. But if you own some clothes and they happen to come apart, you can fix them. Barring that, it might be time that you learned how to make something yourself. It's going to be a great way to pass the winter while you're in lockdown. <laughs> but remember, just be safe on be calm, holy doodles, be safe. But more importantly, be kind. You have no idea what's going on in other people's worlds. We'll see you soon. Bye.